We had the kids tournament, in-house kids tournament this past weekend. I wanted to make a quick video with a couple of points. All my quick videos always turn into a, a monologue. So I hope it's gonna be quick, but I love YouTube because you can fast forward to the exciting parts and there's gonna be some exciting parts. Two points. Oh, I'm on Fort Myers. This is 10 days after Hurricane Ian struck only word I can use is apocalyptic. Now, I came out here because my buddy owns a security company and needs help. And at first when he asked me, I said no, because we had a huge event going on. That was the kids tournament. I wanted to make sure I'm there for the kids, for the parents. And uh, when I got this, this call, Melissa said she could run the show. So went ahead and said, all right, coming out here and uh, letting her handle the tournament with Zach and Kenneth. And she did a phenomenal job. That's the first point. Wanted to thank her for doing the tournament and giving the kids the opportunity to jump out there and, and show off their skills to the parents and everybody that was watching. It was amazing. The videos that you guys sent me, amazing. So that's the second point. I wanted to talk about one of the matches that was posted online and uh, how exciting I was. It was, I watched it at 3 a.m. and I couldn't sleep afterwards, okay? So I've been up since 3 a.m. because I was so excited watching it. And a few reasons why. But let me go back to point one and just tell you guys how hard Melissa worked for this tournament. We do these in-house tournaments so we can control the environment. We can pair the kids up to their level where they're getting pushed, but not over pushed. And yeah, if you got one of those phenoms that uh, won 60 tournaments, they're not in this tournament. This is for the kids that are doing it more as a hobby. And we try to make it fun, exciting, but let them get pushed a little. Okay, so this is why Melissa spent so many hours making the brackets up and why we try to cut the registration by Wednesday so she doesn't have to sit up all night on Friday before the tournament and do the brackets up, which every single time she does, because on Thursday and Friday, we get those, oh man, I missed the register. Oh, I didn't know it was going, oh, can I just put the little Billy Bob in? No. Anyways, you know, we got the big heart. So Melissa always lets them in. I shouldn't tell you that because you'll wait and procrastinate on the next one in February. But I'm just telling you guys why we cut it off so Melissa doesn't have to stay up all night on Friday before making the brackets. But anyways, she did, and she made this tournament run smooth. So major props. Thank you, Melissa, for doing that. Thank you, Zach and um, Kenneth for helping out. So that's point A. Point B, or point number two, I forgot what I used, is the match I'm about to show you. And I'm gonna narrate it a little bit because what is going on with these two kids it's just amazing to me you got to understand they're in my academy all the time and we teach the class a little different than everybody else does we focus a lot on character development not so much as the as the competition side of jujitsu but more of the character side of jujitsu so when i see these kids go out the, into the in-house tournament and the skills they have it just makes my heart warm they're doing absolutely the hardest martial arts that I know of. And if you guys look at my research, I've done a lot of martial arts. This is absolutely the hardest martial arts. 10 years minimum to get your black belt as an adult. These kids at six to seven years old been doing this martial arts over a year. They stuck with the hardest martial arts known to man. To me, it's the hardest sport known to man as well. Um, actually, probably not as hard as rodeo I always say that because those guys are just playing crazy and probably not as hard as rugby but I can't think of anything else that is hard as jujitsu where you got to go out there and this python's trying to grab you take you to the ground and make your lights go out and just just squeeze you okay so when you do it at such an early age and you get used to that Python 
feeling and you get comfortable to that, nothing else in life actually can bother you because you're doing the hardest thing there is. And this goes to the adults too. When you're out there and why jujitsu is becoming so popular so fast is because the more people discover it, it's not so much the self-defense side that they're attracted to. It's actually the spiritual and what it does mentally on the inside to you. And I know I sound like an infomercial now, but once I start talking about jujitsu, I just can't stop. But the, back to the point, the point that I'm trying to make when these kids are that young doing the jujitsu, and I'm gonna show the video in a second, it just gives them such a incredible jump on life. Okay, they're not gonna, they're not gonna worry about things that I was worried about as a kid. You know, all the peer pressure, all the bullying, all the kids making jokes about you. It just doesn't affect them because they're doing the hardest thing known to man on a daily basis or maybe two or three times a week. It is absolutely the greatest gift you can give to a child. And it's why it's mandatory when my son is with me. He doesn't have a choice. Sorry, buddy, I'm the parent. But let me get back to point number two, the, the actual video that kept me up all night. I'm about to show that to you guys. And I'm gonna try to narrate it. I'm getting good at these videos. One day, it's gonna look really professional when I make these things. But anyways, until that day, let's watch this video and I might do a after, uh, after brief, debrief on, on what you just witnessed. But this is cool. Check it out. Okay, here's the match that I was describing earlier. The two pythons going at it. Now they only learn a few takedowns in the academy, but the determination that they're trying to do, or yes, that was awesome. He actually tried to do his little trip, but she reversed it. Now look, she's trying to go to the back. She gets him down. Now they're only six years old with about a year maybe a little over a year of training. I kind of forget, so I don't want to put any f fake news out there, but both these guys train so hard when they come in and um, they, they take the class really, really serious, as you can tell, and they are trying to do the techniques that were shown with massive resistance from their partner. And even though they have fun in class together, when everybody's watching and everybody's screaming and yelling, they turn into pythons that have rabies. I guess that's a good description. Check this out. So I think he gets her down. I have watched this about three times now. And he's trying to actually get his hooks in, which is one of the major positions that we go over. Of course, she knows that. So she's going to get her back flat to the mat so he can't yep he's still doing better than most of my adults can do including me look at that he switched it back to the other side up oh, he he crossed his leg and she's trying to do an ankle lock there no i think she's just trying to unhook him but we never cross our legs in jujitsu because you can't get ankle lock but it's a natural thing for the kids and even the adults to do that because you think you can hold better. And actually you can hold better. It's just that that ankle lock is very, very dangerous, but we'll show him that when he gets older for now, I'll give him a pass on crossing his legs, but she did incredible to defend. Now she's trying to go to the second position we work on a lot. And she knows that the mount and the back mount are the two of the most important positions so we focus a lot on that, as you can tell. He knows that as well. So his knees are coming in to block, block, block. And he's going to get the... Oh, he didn't close the guard. And he's still keeping those knees in. Oh, look at that beautiful shrimp. And he turned his back, which I'll give him a pass on that. Because he thought... It, yep, he, he turned his back, but made it okay, work. Okay, quick look debrief. Oh, I've watched no, that stop five him. times. And okay, I that was the end of the match. Hyped. Hold and I on. think the real reason I get hyped is because I see these kids all the time when they come in. And it's, it's all about fun 
and they're all smiley. But man, when they get in the pressure cooker of competition, they turn into pythons, rabid pythons. Okay, that's probably a silly analogy because is there a such thing as a python with rabies? But that's all I can think of. Man, it was just amazing watching them. And I once again, Melissa, thanks for all you did for the tournament and all you do, Zach, Kenneth, and all the people that helped put it on. I, I saw a lot of volunteers. I appreciate it. And lastly, the parents. Thank you for bringing them in when they don't want to come in. Because I know a lot of you guys face that. It's, I face it with my son. When he's with me, he just wants to have playtime. He's only with me in the summer times, six weeks. He lives in Montana. But guess what? You're doing jujitsu. Because I know, I know what jujitsu can do. No matter what age you are, whenever you start jujitsu, it's going to change your life. That's the infomercial part of me, of course. But he doesn't have a choice. I'm the parent. Yep, we're going to have some fun. But fun and jujitsu, which to me is fun. So you can, you're going to have double fun. Okay, so parents, keep them coming. You're giving them the greatest gift that they will ever get besides probably swimming. Okay, that's another good gift you can give somebody since the earth's made up of 78% water, 80%. Yeah, swimming one, jujitsu two. You guys make it a great day. Thank you for the support.